no problems. My name is Marie Dyer-Strela, um, and I lived in Japan 15 years, and while I was there, I studied Ikebana. So we're going to start with a little short history of Ikebana, and then I will do a demonstration. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Technical difficulties. Can you just click on the background? And Actually, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to do that. Okay. All, All right. right. So uh, let's just go ahead. Next slide. Oh. Yeah, you need control. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, Did you go too far? Yeah, I went too far. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. All right. Um, one more. Should be going back. Oh, it's not going back. And no, it's fine. It's fine. Just leave uh, it and let's go forward. Previous. And previous. Okay. okay. And that's that's it. That's huh? and that's that's way too far. I am so sorry. It is should I be behaving like this. Previous. Previous. No, it's going your way. This is it's, it's going okay, this is fine. Stop right here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Today most people think of this style of flower arrangement when they think of Ikebana. But in fact, the this style called Moribana is very recent. It wasn't invented until the late 1800s, as it says there. Uh, it's very distinctive from American flower arrangement, and that's why it's usually uh, people remember it longer. Let's see if this works. The reason it is more modern is because it uses a kinzom, and this is a heavy um, spike device, comes in all kinds of sizes, and uh, it holds up the flowers in a shallow base. But this is not medieval. Ikebana did come to uh, Japan in the Sick uh, five hundreds, and it first it was just a fire arrangement in the Buddhist temple. As time went on, it's mentioned in uh, very famous uh, ancient books like the Tale of Jenny, and um, people began to use flower arrangements not only in religious places but also in their home and during tea ceremony. During the Kamakura period the architecture began to emphasize this small alcove. And even today, traditional Japanese homes have this uh, small set in place in their main room. It always had, uh, the alcove was always decorated with a scroll and maybe perhaps incense, a candle, and a flower arrangement. Later on, as time progressed, uh, one of the shoguns popularized the tea ceremony. It became very common and he held a competition at the Golden Pavilion with the flower arrangements. Now during this time all flower arrangements were in tall vases and they that is called nagiri. If it's in a tall vase it's called nagiri. If you remember that very first slide I showed you the shallow uh, vase is called moribana. But you don't have to know any of these Japanese words to, in order to succeed in your flower arranging. Nagiri then um, evolved as first just somebody putting a whole bunch of flowers in a tall vase. And, um, you know, they didn't, they just arranged them the way they wanted to. Uh, as tea ceremony became more and more common, people began to uh, associate meaning with uh, the arrangement of the flowers. And the main three points were elements that represented heaven, man, and earth. So if you start at the top, you just go down. The um, most formal styles were triangular, asymmetric, and um, usually the uh, number of flowers or branches were odd, odd numbers instead of even. Finally, in 1462, Sinke Ikebono is noted for writing a book 
that formalized the rules of the Kivana. The first style he created was called Rika. And unlike the one we're going to study today, it had a central axis and was a very complicated arrangement. It would have seven to nine elements. The first three would be the heaven, the earth, and the man. But then he continued to codify and formalize the other elements of the arrangement. These Rika arrangements were huge. Uh, they were used in the castles, and of course, nobles and uh, shoguns and daimos uh, used them to decorate their castles, so they had a lot of money. And uh, this was not practical for the common uh, Japanese person. Uh, Ikebana was practiced by samurai, wealthy men and women, and usually, especially for the samurai, it was a time of meditation, contemplation. It was done in silence, so you could um, calm your spirit. As the um, common people began to arrange flowers more and more, the shoka style developed. This is still a nagiri in a tall vase, but is much simpler and much less formalized than the rika. So this is what we're going to be doing today, emphasizing the three main elements that found a lot of the styles, not all the styles. Uh, the style I studied in Okinawa was called Sugetsu, and it did not even start till 1949. So, but it still followed the traditions of the flower ranging, which is using these three key elements, Shin, Soi, and Akai, heaven, man, and earth. The other rules that usually start, especially for beginners, uh, is using the shin, uh, and it should be one and a half times the length of the base. And then the soy is three fourths, the, or two thirds, the size of the shin. And then the, your flowers would be cut to be much shorter um, and put in uh, two thirds of the length of the soy at 75 degrees. Now I'm going to go over all of these when we're cutting the flowers and demonstrating, but that is the general idea. So we'll be demonstrating the Shoka style of Nagieri because it's in a tall vase. And if it, um, if we, and it looks like we're, gonna, we're moving right along here, uh, I will expand it into a Rika style that could have been used uh, in medieval times that was in a palace rather than a, a home. These are my um, references. I have one of these books, the one by Joseph Conrad. Um, most of the books on Ikebana were not written until the uh, late 1800s or they weren't translated. And that was the main issue I had. Uh, I went to the Congress of uh, the Library of Congress and they told me I could come up to Washington, D.C. and go into the Japanese room and read all these Ikebana books. But uh, since that's not going to happen, I don't have a lot of them. All right, so let's go on with the demonstration. Now. Getting set up. Do you want to start talking about flowers okay. while I'm setting up? All right. In order to um, do mostly Kibana arrangements, you only need a few basic things. You need clippers. Really sharp clippers are very helpful and will move you right along in your process. You need a bowl of water because flowers really, or all plants, should really be cut under water so that they won't suck up air and that will make them uh, last longer and look better. You need um, a vase and it's nice to have a towel to wipe off your clippers and keep them in good shape. And that's it. A vase, some water, and a clippers are the main things. So we're going to start today with a Soka Nagieri arrangement. And like I said, the first branch, the first thing that you work with 
is the, a long branch. It needs to be as long as one and a half times the length of the base plus across the um, circumference. And so if you were measuring this, just put it up next to the base. That would be, well, you need to start this way so because you, you're going to cut off the other end. Uh, that would be one and this would be two and then the, across the top. And then for Nagieri, you've got to have something to stick down in the bottom. Now, this is the deceptive base. It is only this high. It does, the bottom of this base does not go all the way. So um, don't be fooled when I cut short things because that's as high as it goes. All right. In, usually when you're arranging a tall base and you stick things in, Sometimes they go where you want them to, but it's very difficult to make them stay. So the Japanese in Ikebana use a support branch, just a thick branch. Now these, um, this branch comes from the um, sumac trees in my front yard and it's nice and thick. Uh, I also got a branch from the uh, mimosa that's in my yard. And then this is a branch from the actual um, lilies that are going to be used in one of my other arrangements. So you can use all kinds of branches to make your support branch. And usually it's a little bit shorter than the base. So I would cut this one off here. And as we are working, we're going to cut down the middle of this support in order to help us hold our shin in the correct place. So this is probably the first thing you're going to have to cut off some, from some other branch. Uh, these are a little thin to make the support branch. All right, so I've measured this and this is the correct uh, length. And I'm going to put my support branch in here. And I could just put the branch into the support. Let me show you how that's done, like this. And that would work. I put the other knot there. All right, you see how that holds the branch in place. Also, if, I, if you have a branch that's being contrary and keeps trying to want to turn, you can cut the branch. Now, you'll want to figure out which side you want to use as the front. Uh, the front of this branch is best this way. And so I want this branch to stay in this position the whole time. So I'm going to cut up the middle of this branch. Maybe not. To do out there. Take my support branch and put it in between. The shin. So you can see how these are intertwined. And now it will absolutely stay exactly where I want it. Well, I want it at a 15 degree angle. So I'm gonna bring this one up a whole bunch more. So it's practically straight, but not really. And it will be on a plane that's straight across from me. The second branch is called the soy. And the soy will be 45 degrees coming out. Um, on the other side of the base. Now this branch, you know, I, if I was going to use this, I would need to turn it this way uh, because this is the back and uh, we're not going to use that. So that's really not going to work. Here's another one and you can see it already bends at a nice angle and if I put it down in my base, that would be 45 degrees. So let's uh, go with this one. Now you usually don't want a lot of leaves or any other foliage right down here at the mouth of the base. Uh, later on, we will add a few things to make it look uh, fuller, 
but I don't want these little ones, so I'm going to take them off. Also, this is too long for my base that's faking out, and it's really not <laughs> that deep. So I want uh, it, this to be two-thirds of the shin. So the shin goes way up here, and this is two-thirds of this one. And then I'm going to add a little bit for the base, and that's where I'm going to cut it. Now, I didn't demonstrate this in the first, um, when I was cutting the first, well, I already had the first branch cut, but you can see here that I'm going to cut this underwater. Also, I want it cut at this angle so that when it's leaning against the edge of the base, it also is going to maintain the angle I want. So here we go, 45 degrees, and that's looking good. All right, so now we have the shin at 15 degrees and the soy at 45. And the soy also goes a little bit towards the front. And Ikebana is a single base arrangement. It was put in alcoves and it was put you know, in front of uh, Buddhist temples. And so it really is not meant to be viewed from all sides, although some of Ikebana today does uh, make uh, very versatile arrangements, but typically, traditionally, it's only meant to be viewed from one side. So you would make uh, get the soy to go a little bit towards the front of the base. All right, so I'm going to use these small chrysanthemums as my flower. Finally, I have a flower. You're going, wow, these are all branches, and they are. They're branches from my trees. Um, you can use flowers for your soy. It is a really long uh, lily branch uh, that could, could be the soy, but not the shin because it's not long enough for that. But um, it's, it's kind of, uh, the traditional Japanese arrangement has these two items as branches or larger things in life, in nature. This represents a larger plant than flowers. Most flowers don't get as big as trees. So you put the shin and the soy uh, as branches to represent trees and flowers to represent uh, the lower nature elements. All right, so this, the flower is supposed to go 75 degrees, uh, which is practically, you know, straight out, not quite. And it's supposed to also be two thirds of the soy. So this was two thirds of the shin and the flowers are two thirds of the soy. So once again, I'm going to cut a little bit here. So it's down in the vase. I'm going to cut my branch down here in the water. Now on the soy, I didn't cut the branch in half mainly because it was small, but I did wedge it in the support here, and that's what helps hold it. This is a, this type of stem breaks really easily. And if I try to bend it, it is not really going to break. The bend, it's going to break. So I need to um, help it along. And the way you do that is by breaking up some of these fibers so that you can bend this down without breaking it. So now I'm gonna put my flowers in here and I need them to go 70, that's not short enough. Seventy-five degrees. Also, once again, I want these flowers to go towards the front of the base, towards the view. All right, 75 degrees towards you, towards the front of the um, arrangement. And that is technically a Nagieri arrangement. It looks a little sparse. And the thing about Ikebana is, even though you're following rules, rules that help you design and um, the Japanese are following uh, tradition and uh, their ideology that allows them to uh, give a, 
due to nature, it's due. Uh, even though you're doing all that, you still have the freedom to make it look good. If you don't, uh, if you think this is too sparse and you're not into the simple uh, plain, then you can add a little uh, more. The supplemental flowers are called Jewishy, and they certainly are used a, a lot. A lot of people would not go with just the plain arrangement here. Uh, we could put some of these green leaves down here to kind of fill in. Uh, if by making them go this way, then you would actually begin to get a more, more depth in your uh, flower arrangement. I have chosen to use this yellow to bring another color in. You can bring another plant in. And I'm going to make it shorter than the hakai to continue to kind of fill in the um, base and make it look a little more full. Now, once again, I don't want these branches to go down in the base in the water because they will rot. So I'm going to pick off some branches here. And once again, I want this to bend a little bit. So I'm gonna work with it before I even put it in, hoping that I don't break it. And there it goes. Oh, no, that's gonna stay good. All right. So now that fills in that a lot. Let's have another one to go uh, in the background. Of these leaves, and this one's going to give more depth to the arrangement by going the other way. Now, I like that a lot better. What do you think, Michelle? Senna, do you like the fuller arrangement? Looks great. Okay, now the thing about Ikebana is, and there's lots of books. I, I studied for four years. You have to, you're supposed to study four years before you become a teacher. And you're thinking, well, what could you do with flowers for four years? Well, the, the masters, they study 10. And the thing is, uh, every time you move a flower, you're making a alternative uh, deviation. So yeah, this is the book. And uh, we just did basic form five. Uh, that's okay. uh, basic form one simply uses, turns the whole thing around, and now the shin is facing <laughs> the opposite. None of these are forward, of course, but uh, I put the hikai over here, and that is basic form number one. And then if you exchange these, that's another form. And if you... Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways. And like I said, you could get online and look at YouTube and they would show you lots of variations. Or if you bought a book, uh, that would also show you lots of variations. Now, it is, what time is it? Oh, 1.30. All right, so let's go ahead and a look at what would happen to this arrangement if it was the Middle Ages and I lived in Edo, in Tokyo, during the Edo period. I would be practicing Rika instead of Shoka. Uh, and so that would be, uh, it would have nine, seven to nine points instead of three. It would still have these three, but you would go on. I need a central stem. So we're going to use this as our central stem. Still, yeah, this is really getting big now. <laughs> I may have to back off, so. <laughs> okay, all right. And this one is not as tall as the shin. The shin is still gonna be the tallest, and the shin is gonna be one and a half times the length and the diameter of the base, whichever base you're using. But the central line would go, uh, would be a little shorter and would go down here. There we go, How about like that. So now I have four points. So I need support for um, the soy. This is the central line and I need to support the shin and the soy. So I'm going to put 
take this one over here to support the shin. Remember this kind of branch has to have a little help to bend even 15 degrees. Any kind of chrysanthemums has a very stiff branch. And so now this is supporting the shin one. Now you'll notice with Rika, you've got a lot of materials. You, with, the, with the typical soka, which is still medieval, you would have traditionally two materials, the branch and the flowers. And maybe some foliage in the bottom. So maybe three materials. Or you could use another branch. I could have used another um, branch from my, I want to show you this, I have time to do it. From my um, tree in my yard. And it could have served as the background here, the filler, the Jewishy. You know, they, then this really emphasizes the flowers rather than, um, well, um, Yes, this flower is not one of those. Now, now it really emphasizes the flowers rather than uh, more of the background. But we'll put this back in here and I'm going to continue showing you the Rika. Okay, so let's count again. We have our three, Shen Soi Hikai. We have our Jerusalem, that's four. We have our central axis, that's five. And we have a support for the shin. So we need a support for the soy. So this time I am going to use more of the branches. And now obviously this is the front and you can see that this is the back. Uh, so you want the front to be showing forward. Also, I don't really want it to be quite this full. So this branch that is coming toward the front, I'm going to go ahead and take it off just to make it a little less busy. And here we have a dead stem. I'm going to take that off too. Now let's see. Up now. See this one that's coming forward again? Once again, I'm going to take that off. Ikebana is about lines. You want specific lines. And the first three were Shin, Soi, and Akai. The line that went up at 15 degrees, the line that goes 45 degrees, and then the flowers, which keep moving, my goodness, um, which go towards the front at 75 degrees. So those are the lines. Now I put, I'm going to Rika and I put another line, the central axis. And these other branches support the first original lines. So that you still should be able to see the lines. And that's why I cut the branches that were going forward because they were creating a line that did not support my original line. So now you can see that this line is still there. Uh, it's, like I said, kind of busy. So I'm going to take off a little bit of this down here so that it will be a very definite line. All right, so that line is there. These lines are over here. And my central axis needs a little help. So what number am I on? Shin Soi Akai, that's three. The Jewish is four. Five for support for the Shin. Six support for the Soi. And the last one is support for the central axis. I have French lavender. Incredibly. H-E-B was selling French lavender. Uh, I was amazed. So I'm going to use this to support the central axis. They're very tall. So I need to cut it off a little bit down here. Just go right along the bottom of the central axis just to Kind of emphasize it. 
And in fact, this uh, lavender really has a nice fragrance. Uh, none of the other flowers do. So that's a nice addition. All right. So now we have, you know, I think this is just too long. Something is bothering me about this. Like I said, if you don't like it, if it's just not working, then change it. It's yours. Uh, there's no um, Ikebana police going to come after you. Oh, yes, that's much better. All right. So this is what a Rika style would be. And you can see it's much fuller, much busier than the Shoka style. And of course, if I had a palace to decorate and I could bring in a tree branch that was six feet long, then it would be a massive arrangement. My sensei, uh, he had been studying a long time. He was a, an American who had lived in Okinawa for 20 years. He made massive arrangements for the Hilton Hotel lobby. And the lobby would be a, a, a nice, beautiful lobby and use it with staircases and stuff. And the arrangement would be bigger than this table. Uh, it would take all day to make and he would have apprentices or um, helpers there. So it can be very, very complicated. But even in a complicated arrangement, we still have the lines. We have negative space here. And that differentiates Ikebana from American arrangements or European arrangements. They tend to be full and either form a bowl or some solid mass. And so that is the main difference. Do you have any questions? Um, hi, uh, is it Willow? Is that how you pronounce it? My oh. name is Marie. Willow is my tech person, yes. Ms. Oh, okay, Marie, hi, um, I'm Michelle. I don't have an SCA name yet, but um, okay, so what I'm wondering is that, um, are you allowed to use any flower you want for an authentic? Um, or a branch or um, or leaves that you want, or does it have to go by a particular um, tradition or um, like time of the year or um, uh, festival or celebration or anything like that? That's a very astute question. Time of the year is a factor. Uh, the Ikebana tradition is to use flowers that are in season. Otherwise, you have complete pick of anything that you can find. That's why I went out in my yard and found the branches. Uh, and that's why I had trouble with Mother's Day because uh, um, a lot of the other things I might have used like chrysanthemums were gone. Uh, gladiolus would work beautifully because they're long and they uh, bend a little bit. Uh, but there were no gladiolus <laughs> to be bought. But anyway, flowers in season is the only guideline there. You can use whatever you like. My uh, since they would bring cactus stems, we had to use gloves. Um, yeah, so anything, it, because Ikebana is not nature. It's not trying to be artificial in any way. So you just are reflecting what's growing around you or available at that time. So, so it doesn't have to be um, Japanese um, foliage and flowers. It can be American, or if it's imported for, like you said, French lavender, which I love. That's wonderful stuff. So um, you could, it, it, let's say you were um, in Japan and you found um, imported um, flowers like French lavender or maybe roses. Could you use that? Be, you know, if if you were trying to um, be, you know, in within the SEA period, you would run into some Europeans. Actually, my persona is Portuguese. And the Portuguese were the European, was the major European country that visited Japan for a couple hundred years before they shut it down and nobody visited Japan. But uh, there, so there was some cross cultural there and perhaps, you know, uh, some Portuguese guy brought some European flowers with him. I have no idea. But um, in Japan, they use flowers that we have here. Chrysanthemums are very popular. Chrysanthemums are the um, heraldry mark of the emperor of Japan, even today. And it was during the Middle Ages. So any kind of chrysanthemum, these are small chrysanthemums, button chrysanthemums. The bigger ones, of course, were the ones the emperor 
uh, more commonly used, but any kind of chrysanthemum. Also, any kind of evergreen is very traditional. Uh, they have pine trees, fir trees, um, like our cedar trees uh, that we have here in Texas are very similar. And so for your branches, you could use uh, any kind of evergreen and that would be very medieval and very traditional. Um, there are a few things they wouldn't have ever used, baby's breath. Um, I, it doesn't grow in Japan and so um, you wouldn't um, see baby's breath in a traditional Japanese arrangement. Of course, if you're just making one today for your house, you can use whatever you want. But uh, if you were striving for that medieval look, uh, you would lean um, more to, but there's so many things that have already come here from Japan. Uh, persimmons, there is a Japanese persimmon we grow in Texas. Uh, that is very common plants you could get at any nursery and the branches of it would be fantastic uh, for an arrangement. And then especially if they have the little orange blooms on them, that would look very nice. So there are lots of Japanese plants all around us today. Excellent question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we need a couple of the smaller. Ah, uh, yes, I, I was going to show you some other things here. Let me take Let me start with this. You can take this out and it'll not fall. You can do a kibana in any kind of vase. This is a sake vase. It is a, it's not, not a sake vase, it's a sake container. And they used it, uh, they carried it on their hips. That's why it's uh, a half moon style. And you see it only has a small mouth here, but I still, before I moved it, had the three main points. Um, if you want to do modern Ikebana, of course, the Moribana, the flat base is still something that people like to do. And I like to do them just um, because they're so different and they look so distinctive, but it would not be medieval at all, uh, the flat base, because it uses the Kinzom. Kinzoms come in all sizes. Um, from really big, this one is for a, a square base, of course, uh, to really, really small. This little one even comes apart if you wanted to use it for two different things. And certainly they do that. I'm hoping that if more people like Ikebana, we could have additional classes that taught, that would go over other varieties or variations that would be possible to make. There's it's just endless. Of course, nature is endless. And so any combination of nature that you use in your home would also be highly uh, high variations. Any more questions? I did put my handout in the uh, Anstior handout archive thing on Facebook. And there's also a um, handout for the, the materials you need. So that is available all already, it's there. And then uh, of course this will be, this is recorded. And so we, they will be putting it wherever Onstior puts them. Senna, do you know what the Onstior does with recordings? We're, st we're still working on it. I'm not sure, but um, I'm gathering all the recordings now and I'm figuring out where the best place to put them, but I don't know at the moment. So you'll tell us on Facebook or where, um, different, like, different formats where, where it ends up. Exactly. All right. So any other questions? Yeah, Marie, um, could I have your um, email or contact information? I'd like to um, talk to you more about your time in Japan. Um, I realize it's not necessarily a period, but I'd like to, you know, talk to you more and get to know more about your time. And um, if I, I, I don't know if you're a, a Japanese persona, but I'd like to talk to you more about that. Uh, 
but uh, you know, Japan and the Asian uh, part of the world has been embraced by uh, the SCA. So certainly we can work with that. Uh, are, do you have Facebook, Michelle? Yes, I, I do. I have Facebook. We could certainly trend each other. That would be one way. Um, yeah. I, I will also put my email down in the chat room. I, Thank you. But yes, you can friend me, Joyce Brown. Uh, it, oh my goodness, I touched a, it's okay. A key. You're so good. There you go. Uh, you can friend me and I would, uh, you know, or I can friend you, Michelle Gaddis. Uh, you want to give everybody or just Michelle? Uh, the other one's my husband. <laughs> oh, give it to, no, I don't mind if they have my email. That's fine. So I need to put, open up the chat. And put right, you're right there. You're typing right there. Okay. Yeah. So there's a B already on there. All right. Okay. Is this you? Oh wait, let me see if I can get it. Get it. Um, can you? Is that you? Yes, shield. Oh. Yes. Okay. That's okay. my shield. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll I'll send you a friend request. You're most welcome. Most welcome. I'm really glad to have. You. Okay. I think we'll just wrap up and everybody can go take a Sunday afternoon nap and. Um, sure enjoyed having you today. I enjoyed teaching the class.